What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and Russia is following on China's footsteps and disabling TLS 1.3, DNS over HTTPS, DNS over TLS, encrypted SNI. Yes, it's happening Russia. So it's a proposal. It wants to do that, right? Why? The question is, why everybody's obsessed about these technologies as countries china started doing that right or already they augmented the great firewall of china to block these technologies because you know why because these technologies just basically wipes every single bit of of surveillance possible surveillance they're done without these technology with this technology you are blind these surveillance system that you put they are basically blind why guys so how things work today in tls 1.2 and and whatever we have today if i communicate with the web server i make a tcp connection first right so the three-way handshake followed by a tls handshake and then that encrypts my communication right so that i have a key and the server can have a key and we exchange those keys and using diffie, uh, diffie hellman and elective curve diffie hellman so that nobody in the middle can actually see this stuff and then once we have that we start to encrypt everything in the communication and nobody actually can see that and today we are certain that china and, and, and other countries they cannot read our content they cannot go and as a as a citizen, if I search Google, literally, unless way around it, but they cannot find what you're searching for. That we know that it's not possible. The only possible way is if they install a root certificate on your device, and then they served from the firewall from the isp their own certificate that pretends to be google or pretends to be your destination and that will serve to you that will create a man an effective man in the middle tls termination scenario where they decrypt the traffic look at the content re-encrypt it in the back end and send it as 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 beha on behalf of you right almost like a proxy right that's that's what we know today with the encryption however that the, what we have a flaw today not really a flaw but dns there are things that are really not encrypted at all L like dns queries are using udp and this if you want to go the act of going to google.com which is happens before establishing a tcp connection if you think about it is unencrypted so your ISP, your your uh, your DNS provide uh, your your uh, country, your firewalls, anything in the middle can actually any transparent proxies can actually know what sites you want to visit, and they can look at them and they can block you if they want to, because DNS are not encrypted. So, so that's the first thing we're fixing the DNS unencrypted with doh and dot with these two technologies right dns over https and dns over tls two flavors because network engineers love tls they don't like http because they don't want to they want to differentiate between dns queries versus https traffic and they cannot do that if the if you use doh so that they don't like that Right? So that they don't lock the edge. So we have two. You can use whatever you want. Well, regardless, if you do this, we still do not know. We don't know where you're going. That's it. You you can you can basically establish a communication between you and and that DNS provider, Cloudflare or Next DNS or whatever provider that supports DOH or DOT, and then you send all your DNS traffic through this, and all of this stuff is encrypted. So your ISP, your country, your government, they cannot see the queries, but they know you're going to this provider, right? The, the DNS provider. That's the only thing they don't because you, you have to use the IP address. 
So that's, they, they are blind with this. There is another trick that providers use to look if DNS didn't work, right? If that's encrypted, they still can know which site you're visiting from the TLS handshake. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. So if I establish a TLS handshake between me and the server, there is a TLS extension called SNI or server name indication. And this was designed for people who wanna manage multiple websites on the same IP address. So that if I establish a TCP connection, TLS handshake, uh, TCP handshake, and then TLS handshake, how do I know it's a single IP address, but it serves three websites? How do I tell the server which site I want to visit so that it serves me the correct certificate from that website? Let's say server uh, serves, uh, let's, let's say this public IP address serves a.com, b.com, and c.com. So during TLS handshake 1.2 and 1.3, we have an extension called server name indication. And in that, there is a plain text string that we inject in the extension and we say, hey, I want to go to ab.com or b.com or c.com, one, one of those, right? And that, since it's plain text, Great Firewall of China and ISP can easily look through the TLS, look at the SNI and, and find out which domain you're finding and they can block you if they find out and they 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 basically they can essentially log the data that you the this ip address has, has visited this site because you just use the sni right so that even if you use doh we still can find out who wh where you're going okay so so we determined that they cannot read this text the actual content but they can't find out your host right where you're going we're blocking that with DOH and DOT, with DNS, encrypting DNS. However, there is a third final way during the TLS handshake with the AS, with the SNI, with the server name indication. So that's the final, uh, as, as they say, the final straw that broke the camel back. And that's where Cloudflare and others implemented ESNI, which is encrypting the TLS handshake server name indication so that nobody can see anything and that is only available in ts 1.3 and go back to to the article now so now the combo of these four your country is blind it's literally blind they cannot see anything what you're doing if you have these technologies, once you start implementing them, they are literally blind. I mean, you can argue that Cloudflare knows where you're going, right? Whoever hosts the DOH knows where you're going, right? You, you just moved the... You, you just minimized who knows where you're going, essentially. A little bit. And obviously, most countries are not happy about this. So, what's the solution? Block the damn thing. Block it right because it's hindering surveillance and censorship that makes sense that makes perfect sense <laughs> they are blind so they need to see where you're going right what did they claim they claim something like funny it was like i read something that's funny it's like yeah hey, because we want to uh i i forgot i don't know where it is but it's so it's so funny essentially it's just like yeah because we need to essentially find out this information because they are using a system called SORM because I never heard about this before. Moscow regime relies on a system called SORM that allows law enforcement to intercept internet traffic for law enforcement purposes right at the source, at Telco Dinstan. I mean, to be, I actually mentioned this in the, in the China video, right, guys? I mean, at a certain point, you need some visibility from the government's perspective. And you can argue or disagree with me at, at this one. I mean, to me, I don't really care if the government knows which websites I visit. It's not really a big deal, right? I do care if they look at my content. <laughs> but yeah, if they, you know, if they know I go to Google. I mean, the number of websites I visit, are, they are very minimum. It's, ve it's very... Uh, 
Yeah, right. It's just yeah, articles, news, and, and Wikipedia. It's it's useless. It's just the information. Amazon, right? The information exchange. They they definitely they cannot look at this. And unless, as I said, if they intercepted the certificate and serve you their certificate, right? So that's the idea here. So yeah, SORM. They have this SORM, and they wanna they they are just awaiting the public feedback until next uh, month. October 5, 5th, we will know. Take into account the strategic political intelligence intelligence benefit that came come with this law amendment. It will it's almost certain that the amendment will pass. I mean, yeah, of course it will pass. It's Russia. Why wouldn't it pass? Right? It's just it's just interesting. So yeah. What do you think, guys? Do you think these technologies should be blocked? Uh, did you, uh, at, at a certain point, do you do you think that the law enforcement should have access to the sites that you visit for 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 law enforcement purposes, or, or do you think no, it's none of their business? So just just let me do what I what I want to do, and this is like a continuous fight between the the privacy advocates versus just. Yeah, once like wanted to protect them because the 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 use case what I think about guys is like what if uh, what if there is like a bad bad phishing website that you need your people to, you need to block right let's say uh, the government is responsible of having this firewall that blocks bad things like a phishing website that is just stealing people's data right you can block it if you want to if you have access to these tools and you carefully block these things right without with these tools you cannot do anything because you cannot see what's going on all right guys i'm gonna see you in the next one guys will you let me know what you think about these technologies and uh, i'm gonna see you in the next one guys you guys stay awesome goodbye